Ah, oh, well, a very good morning and welcome along as the sun rises in another beautiful day in the city of Hamilton across the whole region of Wakato. And of course, from Matamata is Chris Bungard from Matamata Sports World. <laughs> morning, mate. Yeah. Morning, mate. Yeah, be kind. Oh, sorry. I yeah, now, now, <laughs> now, 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 now. Be kind, please. Be kind. Be kind. Otherwise, I won't listen to you anymore. I'll block you off. Well, carrying on with the fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, righto. A very good morning, everybody, in the beautiful Waikato out there. It's been a bit of beautiful rain around during the week. The farmers are very pleased, and a little bit more due next week as well. So things are looking good. Autumn is in the air, and of course that means sadly we've got to say goodbye to summer. But we should have a month or two of beautiful well, you weather know what that and means? beautiful fishing. It and cools at night, so you get more cuddles. Uh, oh, true. Especially scenes that uh, your beautiful wife, <coughs> your gorgeous wife, yeah. Ms. Ms. X. Townsend mm. from Morrinsville, Matamata region. Correct. Had a birthday with a zero on it. She did. Happy birthday, Mrs. Bungard. Yeah. Uh, she'll be sound and asleep at the moment, I'm picking. But however, look, yes. Look, if you go into the shop and you see her, please wish her a happy birthday on behalf of the whole Waikato. Yeah, yeah. Will that get me into trouble? Uh, probably. Good. If not me. Good. Well, that's because you told me. I know, I know, and um, I, I foolishly told you things before today, actually. But that's Chris, right. I'm, 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 I'm grumpy this morning. Oh. Because of those pricks up at Kawakawa. Oh, mate. Did you see that 99 snapper? Yeah, between three of them. Between three of them. That's only what? They're only at seven each. Mm, they're I only know. 78 snapper overboard. Yeah. I know. There's they a lot of that boats, goes so on, Do you reckon unfortunately. they'll give them their boat back? Uh, well, I hope not, to be fair. Are people, what's going to take to people to learn to say, don't rip and bugger our fish stocks. Mm. And then you got the commercial guys coming out saying, oh, it's because of all these um, private guys fishing that it's rooting the commercial stocks. Mm. I know. Give them a reason to crack uh, at us. It's not good. But, um, you know, I, I think most fish shows, mo most fish shows, recreational fish shows are very, very good. There's a few around that believe that they're bigger than the law itself, which is unfortunate. And uh, they, they just think they can take what they like. And, and, and Man, it's it people like off. that that need to be stomped on. And, uh, yeah. Good job to uh, to those people who were in charge and caught them. So, yeah, nice to know that the authorities are out there checking up, which we is great. We don't need to be kind when there's sods nicking fish. Correct. Is exactly, that all right? Mate. No, Absolutely. I, look, I go and get a feed, Yeah. and I share it around with all the people up the rest home and when my mother-in-law is and that sort of thing. I don't need any more than that. No. What do you need 99 fish for? Exactly. Take you six hours to, to fill up the damn things. Exactly, mate. Anyway, we won't Sorry, go there. I'm, no, 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 I've you're, had, you're, I've you're right, man. I've had my grouch. Good boy. Um, listen, I'll tell you what, It's that we've started a new month. Well, last week we started a new month, of course, and I promised you a really nice setup from Shimano and Sports World for the rod and reel. Well, they've come up with, there's a lot of really, really good fish being caught these days on soft baiting. And soft baiting is, is, is a way that, um, you know, particularly around the mussel farms, you talk to Daryl on that when you're casting into those harvesting barges, um, the slurry trail that comes out of them, and you cast a soft bait in there now, and boy, they are picking up some beautiful snapper, and they're getting busted off regularly. We've come up with a Stratic 5000, which is a beautiful spinning Ooh. reel, smooth as silk. And it's on the new blackout rod, which is a 7 foot 11 rod, um, rated, rated 15, uh, 15 to 30 pound, and it's worth 600 bucks, mate. $600 a Do soft Do you know bait something? Set. I've never soft baited. Haven't you? Never, ever. That's not what your I've... wife told me. But, uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, no, no. Um, she, likes, she enjoys fishing, so. <laughs> Anyway, on that note, if you'd love to get in the draw for that, Minty's fallen off his chair, give us a call on 07 834 1296. You can text me 0274 728 674. And of course, Minty, they can email you. They can. They can email at Waikato Sport at newstalkzb.co.nz. Get on our Facebook page and send me a message like lots of you have during the week to enter the draw. There's Willie up there and there's Rob up there. There's a heap of people going on the Facebook Messenger as well. I'll get you in the draw from there. And um, that's how we do it. Just remember, the empire always strikes back. It does indeed. <laughs> and don't forget about um, Michael from Dinsdale Jewelers. He's put up, he's given away a watch last week. We've got another Olympic divers watch this month. Fantastic. 199 bucks down there in Dinsdale Jewelers. Yeah, and I understand he had a bit of bad luck with the flooding as well. Yeah, so he had, had, had a day yeah. shut with a bit of a roof problem down there, but he's, I think he's all fixed now. We'll see this morning when he goes down there. Well, I tell you what, everybody, if you're looking at getting a bit of flash jewellery or something like that, something nice or a watch or something yep. like that, call on there and say, hey, look, the boys from Newstalk ZB said you could do with a little bit of perking well, up a I, wee I bit. I did after that last a, week, yeah. actually, because it was our 40th wedding anniversary last Sunday. Oh, very and nice. And my wife really loves the Pandora charm things. Correct. You know what I found? 
moments like these. There's a minty Pandora. I gave her one of those. Scary. I am. You don't the think man. it's enough that she's put up with I you for forty am years? I am the man. <laughs> you just. I am. I really am. I'm, I'm believing it. Righto. Well, we. The weekend's finally here, finally here, and it starts now. It's the All Sport Breakfast with Peter Kelly of Bailey's Real Estate. Trust a proven performer. News Talk ZB. And if you think there's an extra sunshine over in the east these days, Minty, it's just a big smile on Luke Ganey's face that uh, won that rod and reel last week, that big gold reel. He's uh, smiling like a Cheshire cat. They reckon they can see it from miles around him on the farm. So uh, you're not interested in him. Oh, did he win the rod and reel that you wanted? Oh, sorry about that. Hey, let's have a quick look at the forecast, and then we're going to go out and head to uh, Coromandel and catch up with young Daryl. The Colville region, southeasterly, 15 knots. Sea slight and easterly swell of one metre or less. Sunday, southeast of 15 knots, turning to northeast of 15 knots in the evening. Monday, northeasterly, 15 knots, easing to variable of 10 knots in the morning. Tuesday, variable 10 knots with a south westerly of 20 knots developing late. Bay of Plenty, southeasterly of 15 knots, sea slight and easterly swell offshore of 1 metre or less. Sunday, southeast of 15 knots, turning to northeast of 15 knots in the evening. Monday, Easing to variable of 10 knots in the morning, and then Tuesday, northwest of 15 knots developing, turning southeast 20 knots later in the day. Raglan today, the mighty west coast, we have a southeasterly of 15 knots. That's easing back to a variable of 10 knots this afternoon. Sea slight, long period of southwesterly swell of 2 metres, and that's easing back. Sunday, variable of 10 knots. Monday, variable of 10 knots. Tuesday, Northwest of 15 knots, turning southwest of 25 knots late. I think that southwest of 25 knots is what Team New Zealand's hoping for, but it might be all over before then. But however, let's go up to the beautiful Coromandel now and find out what's happening with the man himself, young Daryl. Good morning, mate. Yeah, morning, Bungie. Beautiful looking day uh, out there today. Um, hardly any clouds in the sky. Sun hasn't quite come up yet. It's a bit cool. We've got that southeast uh, coming up, and uh, yeah, let's keep the keep the temperature down a bit, but uh, the forecast for the rest of the day looks pretty good, eh? We're up to sort of 22, 23 degrees, and that south east is slowly turning around to the east, so um, yeah, the water shouldn't be too bad, might be a bit scruffy down the first this morning with a bit of south in it, but um, yeah, it should get better as the day goes on, mate. I think the old parkers and cardies and jumpers and all that might have been out this morning, mate. It's only eight degrees at half past four this morning when I dragged myself out of the scratcher and uh, thought, ooh, yeah, definitely a little bit of chill in the air. And I thought, well, I hadn't upset the wife, so it can't have been coming from that. So it must have been just the weather. Yeah, no, classic autumn weather, eh? Cool mornings, beautiful days. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, we're only, uh, only months away from that uh, winter coldness. So, yeah, get out there and make the most of it while the weather's great. So new moon today, reasonably big tides, um, not as big as the full moon at this time of the year, but um, new moon, uh, so reasonably big tides down in the Firth there, there'll be quite a bit of tide run through those farms, and I like the look of this afternoon, you've got low tide about 20 past 2, high tide tonight, right on that change of light, half past 2 or about 8.30 high, um, fishing into the evening and that change of light should be quite good with that extra tide run as well. Yeah, mate, just looking at me, uh, my tide book here, and sunset tonight is, uh, it says 8.17 in my book, so exactly. there you go, you, you're combining that uh, change of tide with the change of light, always a good combination, of course, and um, you did mention that the tides are a bit bigger, so yeah, a bit of tidal run, so um, we've been spending a bit of time this week in uh, Manoa Harbour in the shallows there, and uh, uh. getting some pretty good results, uh, the boys have been in there. Uh, pulling the seed mussels, harvesting the seed mussels to take out you know, further down the gulf to, to continue growing. Uh, but yeah, getting some good results in those uh, shallower waters, of course, with these uh, slightly bigger tides, um, and that tends to produce pretty good results for us. So we, yeah, we're, we're targeting those sort of inner areas on these bigger tides. Um, as I've said over the years, it can get a bit tough uh, when the tides are big out in the middle. There, you'll you'll, you'll find it's hard to um, you know find the bottom and, and stay in touch with your line if you like and uh, you know makes the bite detection a bit harder so yeah good plan this weekend stick and shallow get a bit of burley going um, there's a lot of fish around there's kingies there's trevally there's carwai obviously a, uh, a lot of snapper and they will respond well to, to a burley trail especially if you've got a little bit of current going which uh, you know you should be able to find this weekend
Absolutely, mate. And when you get areas like around Manaya Harbour there and Deadman's Point and those sort of areas, what I like about that, if you're looking for a particularly nice fish, you know, a trophy snapper or something like that, you've got all those bits of fowl around there. You know, out in the open, you haven't really got that fowl. And a lot of those bigger snapper now, we've talked about it over the years, Daryl, they start becoming resident fish almost. You know, there'll be fish that live around that Manaya um, Harbour, that Deadman's Point area, the entrance to Manaya, around those bits of fowl and that. And as you say, if you get them agitated, get them worked up a little bit with a burly trail gun, um, you can pick up some very nice fish there. And people think they're getting busted off by big kingies and that, but there's some snap in there now that uh, you'd class them as XOS boys. Yeah, I tell you what, uh, that Manaya area, especially the entrance to Manaya, which we call, there's, there's, there's a point there called Dead Man's Point. Yeah. Um, now, there's a mussel farm right on that point. There's a lot of fowl around there. Um, and now, in, in the sort of breeze, southeast, uh, turning slowly around to the east, it'll be nice and sheltered in there. So, um, yeah. you know, that might be the uh, the hot tip for the day, Bungie, I reckon. Um, yeah. Yeah, plenty of, plenty of tide run in there, get in shallow. Um, there's a lot of islands around the area as well, Bungie, so if that, if that fails, ultimately get over by an island, you'll find a bit of current, there's reefy bits coming out of the end of the islands as well, um, so yeah, that could be a great plan for today, I think. I think so too, my friend. Look, you have a great day and look after yourself, and we'll look talk, uh, forward to talking to you again next week. Indeed, go Team New Zealand. Hey, did, you yeah, know, did you know that mate. I'm a trophy fish? I'm a trophy husband. Mm-hmm. Trophy husband, <coughs> really? Yeah. Well, look at the size <laughs> yeah. of him, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, did I say yeah. oh, I didn't realise yeah, the microphone quick, was still on. Well <laughs> Have a good day, my friend. Yeah, cheers, guys. Cheers, mate. Uh, trophy Fisher, right? Yeah, I bet the, your lovely wife would love to put you Karen on the Karen loves me. Cr- yeah, I know. She does. Yeah. Heaps. Mm-hmm. You ask her. I'll yeah. get her on the phone. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Give us a call. 07 834 1296. Now, that'll get you a draw for that beautiful Stratic, that spinning reel that is smooth as silk and it's on those blackout rods. If you get a chance to call past Sports World, pop in and have a look. I can show you the rod and reel. Minty's name's down already. I'm as smooth already. as silk. Yeah. I'm as smooth as silk. I can see that. Mm, more of the cocoon type, I think, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. Give us a call. 07 834 1296. You can text me. 0274 728 674 and of course they can get the draw by emailing us. They can. Waikato Sport at newstalkzb.co.nz or get on the Facebook Waikato's All Sports Breakfast and send us a message because that's a really cool way. Your phone number's there, your name's there, I can trace you there and it saves Bunge's phone going off all the time and he loves his phone going off. It's 726. And you're with the Fishing Show on News Talk ZB. Now time to head out to the beautiful West Coast and a place should be looking pretty good out there at the moment. A little bit of breeze around this morning, but they're supposed to die out. A man I know exactly what's happening out there, of course, is Dwayne Penny. Good morning, mate. Yeah, morning, Chris. Great to have you on board this morning, man. You're at the helm of the good ship Clansman, and I understand you're heading down the harbour as we speak. I'm picking that uh, little bit of residual swell probably on the bar there. What was it like when you came in last night? Yeah, I didn't actually go, you say, but um, the boys took the boats out. But yeah, looking at it, that's why I'm just coming up to it now. No, it's not an issue. Plenty of boats already gone out, some were crossing uh, just before daylight this morning, so um, yeah, no issues there at all really. An ideal time of the tide at the moment too for people looking at heading out. You've got had low tide this morning at just on 5 o'clock really, and uh, you've got high tide at 11.20, so the next two or three hours should be ideal for heading out, and then of course they can come back in this evening once the tide turns to come back in again. It should be pretty good boating really. Yeah, it should be. The whole weekend looks really good, so um, yeah, like I say, plenty of boats out, so uh, Everyone's uh, fairly confident, should be good. Unfortunately, some of us peasants have to work today, Cobber, and uh, no doubt you're out there fishing, but you are working at the same time. Mate, a bit of a tough day for the boys yesterday, and of course it's always hard when you haven't been out for a week due to the weather, and then you've got to head out there and you've got a crew on board, and they're all looking at wanting to load up with snapper, and it's just a matter of finding them, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So um, so Rob on the Solana had a good day down on um, Maricopa Way, 55 metres yesterday, so... That's where I'm heading today. I'll head way down the coast and head out fairly deep. So, um, yeah, some nice fish down there on the south of it. Oh, so, um, okay. yeah, the, the other, my boys were out off the barley yesterday. We were been fishing and catching them, but, yeah, pretty tough. So, uh, time to try somewhere new, I think. It's amazing how they shift around, isn't it? And, of course, the cooler temperature now, I don't think the sea temperature would have dropped too much just yet, but they have, we have had a cooler evenings, and um, it only takes a half a degree or a degree in temperature change in that water, and they sort of start heading down towards those worm beds and all that sort of thing, which is known for off Maricopa and that down there. Yeah, for sure, yep, that's always a good spot to head to uh, from now on. So, but, you know, you could go back out where the boys were yesterday and load up today. It's just, um, it's just one of those things. You just don't know where they're going to be. 
On the game fishing scene, mate, it's not too late for that. There's a lot of people are thinking, wow, have I missed it? You know, is it gone? Is it, is it another year over? But um, if you obviously no one's really been out much, so it'll be interesting to see what happens today. But the game fish should certainly still be around. Oh, for sure. Yep, yep. Uh, we didn't get out last week, but, you know, that week before there, on, and when we went out to the trench, we had, oh, we had a double strike and had a few bites. Even had them trying to get on our bungee, so they're still there, and that was, you know, that fairly, that was fairly deep. I don't know what's on shore. We haven't been um, out enough uh, with that rough weather to sort of see what's been happening, but yeah, no, it's still early days. Yeah, I think this time of the year too, that the reality is they will be heading out a little bit, and I would uh, suggest that people are looking heading out there to game fish and that sort of thing. That start probably put the gear in. Uh, I mean, I'd put it in at eighty metres probably, and then head out round to the hundred, hundred and ten. And then if they want to have a crack at that shallower water where there was good numbers of marlin off albatross and that sort of thing in sort of 55 to 58 metres on the way back in maybe. But I'd, I think I'd put the hammer down and head out wide first. Yeah, that 90 metres is always a good area. Always, um, the skippies and that have turned up now too, so there's a bit of action out there. But I always find where it's really dead that the marlin, if they do come across one, they seem to be a lot hungrier. So um, you, you sort of hook up on them a lot easier. I think that's the thing. Obviously, um, sometimes if you want population of fish, as you say, where the bait fish is, but they're usually they're so well fed, they'll have in, they come in in what they call bill tap, they are lures, they just come in with their bill and give it a nudge, usually te- pull off about 10 metres, get you excited, get an adrenaline going and then just cruise off again. But as you say, if you get them in that open water, um, sometimes in between that green and blue water too is a good area, but you know they'll, they'll often come in and attack, as you say, they're usually hungrier. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I think you'll find this year, or this year for some reason they seem to be in groups too. Look, and um, every marlin we've landed this year, all the boys had at least a double strike. So, um, and a few coming into the lures at once. So um, when you're onto them, I'd certainly uh, you know if you have a strike, I'd hang around that area for a good look. Absolutely, it's been a good um, year too, hasn't it? Uh, Raglan and Carfia um, clubs have. Um, you know, registered tag and release on a lot of fish and, and bought in a lot of fish and that sort of thing. Probably one of the best years I've had out there for well a long, long time. Yeah, for sure. There's been that many around. It's been crazy. So, um, you know, and then some people getting some pretty big numbers, you know, by now. So uh, I know some of them well into the scenes uh, for the year. So uh, it's pretty good for recreational boats. Oh, absolutely too. And a lot of it too, of course, mate, is the gear these days. You know, like I'm lucky enough now to have that lovely extreme that we got built and, um, you, you don't, um, you know, you're not going to go out recklessly in them, but you do feel a lot safer. I mean, years ago when I grew up on the Manukau and that sort of thing, we had an old wooden palin that um, I always worked on the theory that if you did get crashed on the bar, at least wood floats and you got a chance of um, you know, floating back in on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, you know, even now the boat's out of the trench, uh, confidence are going out wide now. It's fairly, uh, I remember when I first started, a big boat went out to the trench, it was news around, around the Waikato, and um, now you've, Nothing to see five or six boats out there in a day. Yeah, exactly. They need to get out of your area, mate, and leave it to you. Hey, you have a great day out there, my friend, and thanks for taking the time to have a chat with us. We really appreciate it, mate. Yep, okay. No, it's just good on you. There was Dwayne Penny on the Clansman. The bar's beautiful today. Some of us peasants have got to go back and work this morning, unfortunately, but there's a lot of <coughs> boats heading out today. there. I know uh, I'm Grant beautiful, and I'm Steph beautiful Ac- today. You oh, yeah. me, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wish about that. Anyway, give us a call 07 834 1296. You can text me 0274 728 674. Get you in the draw for that beautiful Stratic 5000 reel. On that blackout rod, it's worth $600, and they can get in the draw as well by emailing the young minty. They can. Waikato Sport at newstalkzb.co.nz or get on the Facebook page. I just showed Bunge how many messages came in by Thor, so yeah. that keeps me busy as well. It's a great way to enter. I see you've you got see. a Puma shirt on there, mate. Puma, yeah. Not like Puma pants. Again. Chapo again, sun shining, calm as we speak, so hopefully all the sensible fishermen will be heading home about now. Well, I got a bit of a growling, actually. I, I, I took your advice and stayed in the beautiful uh, Millennium Manuel's right on the waterfront there on Wednesday night. My dearly beloved uh, happened to turn, well, 60, don't tell anybody for whatever you do. But hey, um, and um, she said, look, I said, look at all the ducks out there. That's fantastic. <laughs> she said, well, whatever you do, don't feed them, will you? Because they'll probably come up to the window. Well, what does dummy do? You know, I thought, well, I, you know, I love ducks and I'll chuck them a few handfuls of peanuts. Well, <laughs> next minute, there's about 40 ducks on our front doorstep. And, uh, yeah. And yes. they won't go away either, do they? No. no, it's, no. It's, it's, it's uh, definitely something you learn. One of those things, you, you never feed the ducks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, listen, mate, I called into hunting and fishing and uh, to see yeah. you, but you weren't there. There, unfortunately, but um, we had to get going, and um, yeah, but you're a legend in there, mate. They said, Oh, Ken Duncan, he knows everything about trout fishing. I said, I know, <laughs> that's why I phoned him on a Saturday morning. 
Oh, thank you. Yeah, now my head's too big. I won't get through the door when I go into work this morning. But uh, no, as I say, I enjoy working there. It's actually a lot of fun catching up with the people, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Yeah. And um, he knew knew of the show and knew us and everything, which was great. So he said, oh, yeah, yeah, we're here. Get a lot of people calling in here looking for Ken Duncan when they uh, <laughs> listen to the show. So that's good, mate. Hey, listen, <laughs> um, we were down there. Obviously, there's a little bit of rain around, but it was only drizzle. It wouldn't have affected the rivers and streams, and uh, the lake was looking a pitch when we left on Thursday morning. But, um, gosh, uh, the rivers and that down there must be a treat to fish at the moment. But as I say, we actually did get quite a lot of rain on Thursday, actually, so it looks like we could probably blame you for that. Yeah. It actually really bucketed down. We had quite heavy rain. The towering itself I went up to about 0.6 of a metre, so it actually came up quite substantially. Been running around about 0.12 or something like that of a metre up till then, but uh, you know, a really nice flow, not enough to really do any damage. Uh, probably shifted a few skinny fish back out of the river again and that sort of thing, but um, just enough to freshen up. The Tongariro went up to about 31 cumex, which again is not excessive, but just enough to probably generate a little bit of movement. So uh, it's dropped back down again. The the TT's back to about 0.3 of a metre today, and the Tongariro has gone down to 23 again, which is its normal sort of summer flow. So if anyone's heading this way, it's probably a perfect time to go for a bit of a walk and just have a look around. The early spawners could be there. I remember I uh, went for a walk up there with our detective friend from Matter Matter and, uh, once, uh, it was March, about two or three years ago, yeah. and uh, we actually saw some quite nice fish spawning up there and caught a, a nice rainbow around about three or four pounds. So, yeah. as I say, it's a, it's a good opportunity to go and have a good look around with after that rain. You know, it's probably got some things moving. Bobby's very good at that light tackle, mate, because he's got short <laughs> arms and long pockets and um, those, little, those short arms are quite handy for flicking that fire rod around especially underneath some of those overlying trees and what have you exactly no as I say it was a good day and it was a good it's a good time of the year we're actually planning we're just talking about it with one of the guys from work and we're talking about going for a wander up the river and, and going right up the top end and, and having a good look around it's a nice place to go take a day and go for a walk and um, just see what's going on before the before the big runs start later on in the winter absolutely mate and just quickly out on the lake um, we were sitting in the literally sitting in the uh, room the other day and you could see fish rising quite shallow obviously out in front of that millennium there there's a lot of swans and ducks and all that sort of thing around and that's a sign that it's shallow so if you're out on a lake or anything like that here's a tip for you if you see swans and that don't go over to them for a look because they're probably sitting in about a meter of water no it does it shelves off out there it goes out quite quite gently and then it drops into quite deep water out in front of the millennium there so it's actually yeah. not a bad place you'll often see um, richard staines and white striker heading around over there he's got a little hole that he likes to fish around there with his clients some days so yeah. but as i say the lake the, the the smelt we're, we're still getting a lot of comments about um, a mixed bag in terms of the slabby fish. There's there is still some skinny fish there. There's been plenty of smelt in the lake for them, so they'll be feeding up. So don't be too disheartened. It means that the good fish are still around, but it's just a matter of persevering to get them. The harling we're noticing now that we're starting to get them on the mainly on the darker flies. So your green orbits and your um, the, the darker colourings, rabbits and things like that are all starting to work. But it's uh, that have gone from the pale colours down to the darker colours, which shows that most of that spawning's over for them now, and so they've gone darker yeah, yeah. And, and gone out into the deeper water. So jigging's going really, really well. Harling has dropped off a little bit, um, but as I say, we're still getting those skinny fish cruising the shallows looking for food, so you can still have a lot of fun. Yeah, well, it's a bit like in the studio here, mate. You've got one slabby fish and you've got one in a bit better condition, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, oh, gee, I'm getting a bad look from the other side of the county here. <laughs> oh, I mean, exactly. Yeah, well, as I say, it's like that, but they, they've got plenty of time. Like Last year, the spawning runs went right through until almost to Christmas time. It was quite amazing how long they run for. So yeah, yeah. those fish are now coming back out into the lake and feeding up, so they'll put the condition on and probably run again the same time next year, or this year, I should say. Yeah, for sure, man. Look, you have a great day, young Ken, and thanks very much for taking the time out to chat with us, right? We really do appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, guys. Cheers. Good on you, mate. Have a great day. Well, there are. If you want to catch up with Ken, call into Hunting and Fishing in Taupo there on a Saturday. He'll be there, and he's got some wonderful advice. A very nice guy, and he will help you navigate you around some of those streams and rivers in that Taupo region. When we come back, well, we've got a couple of guys to catch up with yet. Glenn Skinner in the Rota Vegas region, and we'll head up to the beautiful Mercury Bay to catch up with John Elwood. 7.43. All the reaction and analysis. The All Sport Breakfast. Until 9. With Peter Kelly of Bailey's Real Estate. Trust a proven performer. News Talk ZB. Yeah, the fishing show on News Talk ZB. Great to be on board with us this morning. Give us a call. 07 834 1296. You can text me 0274 
728 674. They're getting a draw for that beautiful soft baiting set. Or you could use it for trout spinning as well. That's Stratic 5000. Smooth as silk. It's on a blackout rod. Absolutely awesome. It's worth 600 simoleons. So uh, let's head off down to Rotor Vegas now. Catch up with a man from the Trout Connection, of course, who knows that area like the proverbial back of his hand. Hell of a lot of fun to get out on the water with is young Glenn Skinner. Good morning, mate. Morning, Budgie. How are you? Yeah, razor sharp. Thanks, mate. I put it down to good, clean living and a healthy lifestyle, and I've now got a 60-year-old wife, which is uh, looking younger every day. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, luckily she doesn't listen to the show either, which is good. So anyway, um, listen, mate, what's happening down there? Beautiful um, forecast today and tomorrow, or a little bit of a sou'easterly, which sneaks down that road of weedy and, uh, you know, can cause the old chill factor to go up a wee bit, and might need a little cardy as you're heading out there today. Certainly, uh, certainly would. Well, we had the um, the police fishing tournament uh, earlier in the week, and some top results from well over a hundred anglers there. The winning fish was uh, just a tad over four kg, four point zero eight. Oh, nice! And uh, that was caught by um, Daryl Black, who is a, a top local fisherman. Uh, cleaned up again in that um, in that tournament. Um, actually caught deep trolling, so that's kind of interesting. Ah. Just, the, the norm, just the normal um, southern and eastern runs all the way through to the back, uh, the uh, eastern end of the lake, and that is where most of the activity is at the moment, the east end of the lake. Uh, for the jiggers, it's more the northern side uh, from Hinihopu around from the slip and then back into the second set of skids that uh, had uh, quite a few of the, the local boys hanging off that area for for most of the week. <clears throat> and some good fish uh, caught there. We were actually there yesterday too and did pretty well ourselves. So um, that's the place to have a look at. Around the 200 metre boy is kind of the area. Then back there's a little bit of structure. Pretty flat in that area, but there's a little bit of structure heading back towards the skids. And um, anywhere from the boy back towards the skids is producing some pretty good fish. I mean, that guy's obviously a good fisherman, mate. And, and people say, oh, you know, he's a lucky beggar. And uh, used to get called out at myself a few times years ago when fishing Mare Island and places like that. But you do create your own luck. It's funny how the lucky fishermen always seem to catch the fish every time, but um, they, uh, local knowledge is good, of course, and knowing where and how to fish, of course, is a big thing. It's all very well knowing the depth and the structure and all that, but it's knowing you know, how to place the line, what depth to place it at, and, and you know, whether you have a teaser fly in front and different things like that. The combinations are huge. Um, yeah, that's no, certainly very important, and, and of course, um, as the as the shoals of fish move around the lake, you know, uh, depending on um, obviously hatches of smelt and concentrations of food and, and uh, things like that, um, they keep their eye on them uh, as we do, and um, and obviously that increases your numbers too. Last time we spoke, Tararua was um, firing up quite well. You said that the the fish size had increased quite markedly down there, and also the condition of them. Um, any news on the continuation of that? Uh, well, that's kind of an interesting point because kind of kind of mixed results from Tarawera. Uh. There have been um, some really nice fish come in. I mean, even in that police tournament, there were uh, quite a number of fish over three kg weighed in. But um, but the stats for the competition, the average for uh, for Tarawera, sorry, was one point four, uh. and the average for Rotowiti was one point nine. Just remember that's across uh, the full gamut, all different techniques. So there was a lot of People down rigging and um, harling and trolling. Um, equally, there was a you know a truckload of people that were, were jigging as well. So, one point nine. I would have thought that was a tad light for Rotowiti because I mean the average uh, for for us and and uh, most of the guys that we sort of link in with is, is well into the twos. You know, two point two, two point three. We haven't. Um, caught too many fish, you know, uh, in that one point nine bracket. Yeah, yeah. Um in that tournament there was a you know, there was a lot of prizes for like condition factor and, and stuff across the lakes and of course uh the tournament as a whole. Um so very very interesting to sort of see that that was that was a little bit light for what I would have you know, for what we've seen ourselves and and obviously the feedback we've had from other anglers. So yeah, interesting. One point four a little bit light, I thought it would have been way higher than that. Yeah, yeah. All right, my friend, thank you very much for taking the time of the chat with us. We really appreciate it, and get out there and enjoy the lake this weekend, and we shall catch up with you again next week. Fantastic, Bungie. Have a good one. You too, my friend. There are Glenn Skinner from the Trout Connection in the Rota Vegas region. Great bloke. Get out there with him. He knows his stuff. He'll either take you on his boats, or you can he can go on your boat and give you a few tips and that sort of thing. Very, very knowledgeable chap, and 
worth having on board with you just for a day or half a day just to learn some of the tricks of the trade um boy you might think wow okay so you do that and this and it does increase your catch rate as well and you'll have a giggle or two as well and perhaps some additional lemonade as the day goes on let's head up to the beautiful mercury bay region next we're going to catch up with a big fellow up there called john elwood but yeah, we're going to after the break correct should we have a break for pay some bills okay can we have some bills going to but look chris is doing nothing can you text him because what's your text number? Because you're sitting there 0274 728 674. Can you everybody text them right now? Because then I can have a coffee Good while we're mucking around at 7. Saturdays are for talking sports. The All Sport Breakfast with Peter Kelly of Bailey's Real Estate. Trust a proven performer. News Talk ZB. And we're now heading up to the beautiful Mercury Bay region. A man who would love this prize this month, the Stratic 5000 spinning reel from Shimano on that blackout rod. A soft bait Seth worth 600 bucks. Johnny Boy, that would look good on the wire, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, I've got to have one, mate. It's not a go- You've got to get me one of those. Exactly, exactly. I'll put your name in the drawer and the very best of luck. Now, first of all, <laughs> weather-wise, um, a little bit of a south-easterly around. Is that sort of curling around the Mercury Bay region there as we speak? Yeah, it came through at about oh, 2 o'clock this morning, mate. Really, uh, bit of rain and uh, yeah. a bit of lightning and a bit of thunder. And she's, uh, yeah, she's fairly fresh, about 15 to 20 at the moment. So, uh, it's so a very so f- I had to turn around because it's blown right up my freckle. Yeah, it's a very, very frustrating breeze, you know, for people wanting to head out. Well, it's a tough one for snapper fishing. It's also, I find, a really tough one for game fishing. And the amount of times I've headed out, you know, in this time of the year, uh, late February, March, and comps and that sort of thing, and you get that cold, sow easterly blowing first thing in the morning. Okay, it usually settles down in the afternoon a bit, but boy, it makes things a bit fresh in the morning when you're trying to head out, put those outriggers out, and put the lures out and everything, and the, and the old sow easterly is just kicking up that bit of, bit of spray that sort of goes over you at about eight degrees. It's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's got a bit of chill to it. That's for real, mate. But oh, we got we got the trailer boat tournament on up here at the moment, so there's. Um there's fizzes for Africa. Oh, excellent. So it's uh, quite interesting. Up at Kuvia yesterday, I had a fish up there. It was a little bit slow, but we picked up a good feed and came back down to the Mercs last night and had a good run on, right on dusk. But it's been pretty quiet, sort of real patchy fishing at the moment. Well, I know people like to look for excuses, but I've always found the sow easterlies hard work, John. I, I always have over the years, and, you know, the old sayings that fishers use at southeast, fish the least, and all sorts of things. But, gee, I, I really do find it makes a difference, mate. Oh yeah, it does, mate. It does. So you just gotta, you just gotta work those edges, and uh, I think we might go and uh, get a few piper this afternoon, a bit of fresh bait, and uh, give that a little bit of a hiding, and see what happens for the evening bite. Because I definitely love that fresh stuff. No, absolutely. You've got to try and stimulate them somehow and get that burly going. You've got quite big tides at the moment, John. New moon today. Um, yep. So that should help you with some of those more sheltered spots, likes of, you know, um, Peach Grove, maybe the reef off there or something like that is a, an area that I'd sort of be looking at a wee bit, maybe. Yeah, but Sally's blowing straight in there. Mate. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's a metre and a half out the corner. So we'll ah. probably be Sail Rock um, up the top end. So try and keep out of it and uh, sort of get that outgoing tide this evening. Should be. Uh, well, it's 7.30, called day turn, so it should be a little bit of a crack. Yeah, 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 okay, so you're going to fish the sisters or something like that, are you? Hmm. Well, yeah, sort of down that way, um, got on a little spot down the end there at the moment, and it's fishing very well on that turn of the tide, nice. so I was going to try and nice. give that a shot tonight, and uh, hopefully I won't have to muscle my way in. That's the story, mate. And just quickly, um, out wide, uh, obviously people have had a bit of scruffy weather to put up with, but there's a few nice blues have shown up and that sort of thing, John, which is exciting. Yeah, yeah, and there's some very nice yellowfin. There was a uh, 79.8 kg yellowfin caught uh, during the week, as well as uh, four or five 20 and 30s, and ah. all come out of the hook area. Nice, nice. Oh, well, that's good to know, yeah. John. Excellent. Oh, there'll be a few out there today and tomorrow I'm picking. All right, my friend, you have a great day, mate. Thanks for having a chat with us. We really appreciate it, and we shall talk again next week. Yep, tight lines, everybody. Good on you, mate. There are John Elwood on the Y. Great bloke. If you ever get a chance to head out on that vessel, it's a lot of fun. Minty coming up, big sports hour. Wow, <coughs> big game tonight. Just saying, like, you know. Yep, there is indeed. We've got Matt Cooper talking the Chiefs. We've got Glenn Ross talking Marty Cup, Director of Rowing at Boys High. Ross Filippo, the new Waikato rugby coach. Yes. We've got Butch Castles on. We've got Aaron Thorison about drags at Mary Mary. So heaps and heaps after eight. Got a big thing too. Out of Dinsdale yesterday, one of our listeners, and it's a Ford Ranger Ute. Orange one with star mags on it. The, the number plate was WIDC40, Woodcat. Got stolen yesterday. They were one of our listeners with the Ouch. boat behind it. I put a photo of it on our... Um, Wake at a sports breakfast Facebook Where are you from? page. Dunsdale and Hamilton. Oh, mate. Have a great day, everybody. See you soon.
When it comes to roof restoration, most companies don't have the 